The Zerg vs. Zerg matchup is certainly the most aggressive one in the early game. However, once you get past the early game, into the mid game, and past the mid game, into the late game, some ridiculous strategies do appear. And what I've got for you today is a game between the two very best ZVZ players in the world right now, in my opinion. Spawning here, in the bottom right hand corner of Acropolis, playing with the Red Zerg drones, we have the Italian Stallion, who goes by the name of Raynor. His opponent in the opposite corner playing with the blue Zerg drones. So widely considered to be the best StarCraft 2 player of all time. He's known as the Finisher. He used to also be known by the name of the Night King. But then we all watched the final season of Game of Thrones. And let's be honest, the Night King was a little bit disappointing. So we really only just call him the Night... The, the, not the Night King anymore, but we call him the Finisher. We have, of course, none other than several. All right, Luke. So for the vast majority of StarCraft 2 players out there, and that includes myself as well, when we play Zerg vs. Zerg, the majority of the games end within like the first 5 to 10 minutes, and sometimes even earlier than that. The thing is, if your micro is not pretty much perfect, and not a lot of people out there are capable of microing their units perfectly, because especially in the early game of ZVZ, everything is so fast, uh, the game can be over right then and there. So a lot of games end with the Ling Bane phase. After that, of course, it transitions towards the Roach Ravager phase, and the vast majority of games, if they didn't end with the Ling Bane phase, end with the Roach Ravager phase. However, after that, when you transition towards Hydralisks, towards Lurkers, Sometimes, obviously, we see Muras instead of Roaches as well, but if you go into Vipers in the late game, there's a ton of variety and a ton of strategies that do appear that really are only played by the guys at the tippity top of the skill level. It's pretty interesting because this is a pretty undiscovered territory in StarCraft 2 in general. When it comes to the best ZPZ players in the world, really only four names come to mind for me. So it's Serral, Raynor, of course, and then Dark and Rogue. I think they are considered to be the best ZPZ players in the world. And I don't really know exactly how often, for example, Serral would practice with any of those other guys. I can imagine Raynor and Serral don't really practice all too often because they meet each other in tournaments all the time. And they have this crazy rivalry going on over the last year already. Getting that practice in for the late game is actually pretty strange, right? Because if you know you can win the majority of the games in the early game or in the mid game, why would you ever practice late game in the first place, right? How are you going to practice late game if only a handful of players are going to be able to reach that? So most of the late game seems to be made up on the fly and um well this is a good example of a game just like that as well that gets absolutely ridiculous i know that some of you probably clicked on this video expecting like a best of five series or something along those lines nope this is just a single game it was uh, played as actually uh, game number one of the grand finals of home story cup i don't really remember the details anymore either but uh, i do know that this is an epic game of zvz so we'll figure it out together Alrighty. so it is going to be a quick bailing nest here for Serral. There's a little bit of variety in the early game. Sometimes you can skip out that bailing nest, or at the very least delay it. If you know that your opponent is, is good at ZVZ, sometimes it's not worth making that big group of Zerklings, because you know that they're likely going to be able to defend it anyway. There's this weird mind game going on in ZVZ, where you constantly try and assume how good your opponent is. And if you think your opponent is really, really good, you can oftentimes either delay, like Raynor is doing right here, or just skip the bailing nest entirely. Serral is not likely to assume right here that Raynor is gonna die to just Ling Bane aggression. So Raynor knows this and he decided to delay the Bailing Nest right here until the absolute latest possible moment. This is technically very greedy, but it allows him to just squeeze out one or two additional workers here in the early game and that can make all the difference. And you can see right here, I think that if Serral would have decided to go all out right here on the Ling Bane aggression, he probably would be able to get quite a bit of damage done. Thing is that Bailing Nest of, of Raynor is just simply super late, but Serral is not the kind of guy who really does that, so Raynor cutting a small corner here gets the small economic advantage here early on. Already though, we see uh, we see Serral catching up in that drone count. He's very good at just simply producing a lot of stuff. I know uh, that's something that I also said about uh, that I also said about uh, innovation a couple of days ago. He used to be very well known for just simply producing a lot of stuff, but Serral's very similar to that in ZVZ and, and ZVT and ZVP as well. He just simply produces a lot of units faster than the opponents, even at the highest level of play. Nice little bit of control there, though. Raynor ends up getting that one bailing, tries to get a little bit of damage done. One worker here killed in total. 
but obviously nothing to write home about. Both players here giving each other the respect that they reserve, neither of them really committing to all too much aggression. And that does mean that the early game at this point is essentially done for. I mean, yeah, they both have still a bunch of Zerklings out, right? And they can definitely get aggressive, but really this is just like the sufficient amount of Zerklings that you need to make if you want to sustain yourself in this game, if you don't want to go down. And I don't think that Serral's pushing right now with the intention of winning this game here either. He knows his opponent is going to be good enough to defend here no matter what. So we have a bit of a skirmish, but I don't think that either of them really, uh, really assumes that they're going to be able to get a large advantage. So... Lairs are coming up, Roach Warrants are coming up as well, plus one Missile Attack also come up. Plus one Missile, obviously, absolutely massive. Now, here we go, Cyril's trying to get a little bit of an advantage here with a big Banelink connection. He can certainly obtain a big lead here, and there it is. Nice bit of control, but already a lot of the units there were killed as well. It took a little bit of time before those Banelinks connected, and in the grand scheme of things, I mean, both players losing a very similar amount of resources here, all things considered. Now, usually when plus one missile is done, that's also the moment where Zerk versus Zerk's early game really end. The thing is, with plus one missile attacks, Roach is two shot Zerklings rather than three shot, which is absolutely massive. Um, I mean, it, it really does make those Zerklings melt much, much quicker. You can see right here, though, Serral not entirely sure what it is he's going up against. He's going to be able to scout around right now what is going on instead of the main base, and Raynor is also doing the same thing. He's just patrolling there for a little bit. Just making sure that it's not going to be a Nidus Worm going up here at this location on the map. Fourth base coming up here for Raynor. You can see Raynor is playing a little bit more aggressively, right? He's cutting a couple of corners here. Um, I think this is primarily due to the way that Serral pretty much always approaches StockCraft 2. He seems to always be trying to go for the most stock standard way of playing. He doesn't really play cheesy, and when he does play cheesy, he goes all out. But he doesn't really he doesn't really strike me as a kind of player who cuts corners here and there. He just simply plays a little bit better, and uh, he tries to, uh, to outplay the opponent in the long run. But it does now allow Reiner to get a small supply lead here. That fourth base is a little bit quicker as well. He's got a good amount of units here going anyway. Now, here's the first big deviation. So, where Raynor is getting himself the plus one uh, carapace upgrade right now as well, so he's going plus one and plus two at the same time, Serral instead decides to go for the Spire. Very interesting. So, we already do have plus two missile coming up as well for Serral, so that does mean he likely doesn't want to commit too, too much into making Mutalisk. But at the very least, he wants to make a bunch of Mutas, so he can at the very least take that map control. Map control is huge. If you can kill your opponent's uh, Overlords, for example, that can be uh, an absolute nuisance already. You can see the Overlord dance right here. All of them patrolling around with the Overlord speed upgrade. <laughs> that way they can't be biled down nearly as easily. Now, if you do invest, though, into that Spire, right? Yeah, four Mutas will eventually kill this amount of Roaches, but is it going to be enough? And is it going to be able to happen in time? Well, nice Concave here, though, for Serral. Apparently, Raynor does decide to commit here. Serral actually inching a couple of those Roaches forward as well, dodging those Biles like an absolute champ. Thing is, Raynor does have a larger army, and those couple of Ravagers do certainly help out. Mutas right now are available, though. They're going to immediately target fire down the very first of those Ravagers. But Raynor is smelling blood in the water. He's just simply pushing through right here, right now. He doesn't quite have all of those upgrades done yet, so this is a bit of an unorthodox timing. Probably another mind game that he's playing right here, because technically this is an inferior push, but he must have uh, sniffed out exactly what it is that Serral was trying to do, and therefore he decided to push before his upgrades were done. Normally, players always want to push right when those evolution chambers finish up at the same time as well. Right now, though, Serral managed to hold on. He's going to be able to start some counter-attacks here as well towards that fourth base. No Spore Crawler set up over here, actually, so that could be a little bit annoying. How many Mutas are there here in total? Really not that many. It's only it's only four Mutas right now. A couple more are coming out as well. But I think that this is primarily just here for Serral to snipe those Overlords and take control of the map. It's difficult to scout right now if you are the player in red because you know that those Mutas are technically going to be able to snipe everything. And you can see right now that map vision here for the player in blue for Serral is significantly better already than that of Raynor. I think those Mutas will probably head to the northern section of the map next. That's the area of the map where they haven't been to yet, and I think that these Overlords are going to be in a little bit of trouble as well. Serral clearly uh, knows where his opponent's Overlords are located. And you can see, even though he doesn't technically know exactly where they are, uh, he still knows that they should be around this area of the map. Raynor, though, getting another scout in here. Overseers, obviously, also do get that Nermatized Carapace upgrade, that Overlord speed upgrade. But uh, this is a lot of that, uh, this is a lot of that, uh, you know, map control gone right now for the player in red. 
Okay, so what do you do right now if you are Raynor? Well, he's got the fourth base. He's going up towards a Lurker Den. This is that transition that I was talking about. This is where, for the vast majority of players, the game ends. Right? At the very least, the vast majority of my games end right around this time. It takes about one mistake up to this point to lose the game. And most of the time, that mistake has already been made. Serraldo not committing to too many Omudas here. Just trying to get a little bit of damage here. I mean, he already knows he forced out those Spork Crawlers. He knows he got a whole lot of Overlords here too. This really does hurt, but Raynor did manage to max out. No Hive yet, which is actually a pretty important scout too. A lot of Roaches actually moving here on the right-hand side, uh, right side of the map. And this is actually pretty huge because at this point, we also see the majority of that Zerg army of Raynor moving forward. He does have a couple of Lurkers in the mix here too. At the same time, though, the third base is in a lot of trouble. Serral picking up a couple of those Hydras right as they spawn. Spinecrawler coming up, but I've got a feeling that that one won't be finishing. And even though the Mutas are nice and all, right? Are they going to be able to stop this advancement here of the Lurkers? The Mutas do decide to come back home. Nice set of corrosive balls here as well from Serral. 20 drones end up being killed by this Roach hit squad, as well as the base over there. Roach Warren actually will fall too, so in just a minute, we won't be able to see additional Roaches coming out here for a Raynor. Raynor, though, is in a really powerful position. Did he kill the majority of those Mutas? There's still six of them available. A uh, couple of Hydras, though, in the mix here. That's going to, at the very least, allow these Mutas to be forced back. Or, at the very least, not allow those Mutas to engage this army. At the same time, the Roaches are trying to get a little bit of work done. Looks like Raynor did, indeed, finish up a couple of defensive Lurkers, too. Both players take a tremendous amount of losses. But I think that Serral should be able to defend here in the long run. Oh, uh, well. I've got a feeling those Mutas are going to be in trouble. Beautiful Sandwich here, though. By the Finnish Phenom. That's another nickname, actually, of his. The Finnish Phenom. All those army units will be killed. At the same time, one pesky little roach scouted up north, found himself a base, and is actually ki killing a couple of those units here, already going after uh, his second worker. Well, that's going to be the only one he's going to be able to get. Okay, so let's take up inventory here for a second, right? Raynor did lose the base. However, he has those lurkers out. Lurkers are kind of like siege tanks in TVT. They can allow you to hold attacks from your opponent. Right now we see a 95 army supply here versus 63 for Raynor. Uh, they can hold engagements and pushes because of positional advantage, right? Even if your army is smaller, you can still hold. So right now those scouts out. okay, you know what? There's no base in the south. There's no base over here at the third eater. I know that I'm going to be in a good spot here. Does he really want to engage? He's going to at the very least try. Obviously, when you are aggressive right now, if you are the, the Finnish Zerg player here, you know that your opponent is not going to be able to push across the map either. So just simply buying time here is quite huge. He does have another base coming up here too, which is nice. Hive coming up, by the way, as well for both players. But here we go. Serra actually tries to get into a good position, and he does get it. Most of those Lurkers have to scramble right now to watch that high ground. Queen goes down. One of those Lurkers goes down as well. Not all of the Lurkers, though. Yeah, not all of the Lurkers have moved over to that high ground. And you know what? Serral's actually just going to try and force himself into that natural. Roach Warren taking a lot of damage. I think that this one will probably fall here in just a little bit. Although the Lurkers do get put into a position where at the very least they can ooh, start hitting here as well. One of them once again falls. Really, you should just finish off the Roach Warren at this point, right? It seems like a, it seems like a no-brainer. But Serral's army here, though, is going to be called Reinforcing Roaches. Come out of that main hatchery as well as the natural one. But in the meantime, those leftover units do clean up the last of the Lurkers. Okay, so Sarah wanted to see if he can end the game right there. Didn't quite happen. So the Hive is huge, right? When you can start producing Vipers, you can start using them for Abducts, but also Blinding Clouds. Both of those abilities work on Lurkers. So you can essentially disable your opponent's Lurkers while simultaneously also... Um, you know, dealing uh, dealing uh, with with the units when they are out of position, you can pull them out of uh, out of the ground. So if you abduct a unit that's uh, that's burrowed, it will actually be unburrowed when you abduct it. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of cool micro tricks that are available. But this is very much so undiscovered territory, right? So obviously there are more good ZVZ players in the world. I mean, Sue, Solar, Elaser, Ragnarok, Scarlet, uh, Lambo. I mean, there's a bunch of really good ZVZ players. But I don't think I don't think them they are as experienced as these two are when it comes to playing the late game. But even these two players right here are not going to be as experienced at this point. This is very much so where it is going to be mostly about game sense and mostly about... 
uh, you know, knowing what your opponent is capable of. Because this is very much so undiscovered territory. This is not going to be the type of game you will see too often on the ladder. Now, it seems to be, especially with the new patch, since there's that new upgrade right here, the Seismic Spines, it seems to be that the ultimate late game ZVZ army is Hydra Lurker Viper. Hydra Lurker Viper is incredible. It essentially deals with everything. Since Brute Lords can be abducted, um, it just simply makes them, uh, you know, not that great in this matchup. But there we go. One abduct on one of those Lurkers. It's a lot of resources down the drain. Both players, though, trying to get that same upgrade going. And just like we saw previously, ooh, while normally it's difficult to uh, to push into like an engaged and, 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 and entrenched army like this one right over here, these Vipers can change that, right? These Vipers can abduct the units one at a time and it can do a lot of damage. So there we go. Raynor is actually inching forward right now. Gets a couple of those Lurkers as they are morphing in. Good counsels there though by Raynor. You do need detection as well to see those Lurkers. There's not that much energy anymore on these Vipers. So apparently this is the moment where Serral pulls the trigger. He decides to move forward. Does he have enough? Apparently... He backs off for the time being, but he forces that army from Raynor to go back home as well. And this is where the game goes nuts. This is the moment where everything essentially is a new uh, territory in SC2. All right, so those mutas from earlier, man, they're still left over. He just made like seven mutas, and I feel like they have probably been worth their weight in gold. I feel like they have killed like a thousand more resources uh, than what they cost themselves. Obviously, only really something you can do if you have the multitasking to actually control them. Still think it's pretty huge, though, because Raynor's army vision, or, or rather map vision right now, is really not that great, right? Like, he doesn't really know exactly what's going on. Serral, though, on the other hand, does still have a couple of overlords patrolling on the bottom section and the northern section as well. He gets to control the map a lot more easily. That's just because of those couple of mutas that he made earlier. Threatening to go down that ramp. Not quite getting it. Watchtower Roach will be picked off as well, but you can see Serral right now transitioning towards Hydra Lurker Viper, getting himself the plus three missile upgrade as well. Raynor does still have quite a lot of Roaches in the mix. Also, uh, because of that, a couple more Vipers, which is very helpful too. Vipers can, by the way, also utilize Parasitic Bomb, which is also huge. Looks like there was a, a bit of a cutoff right here in the northern section. Parasitic Bomb does indeed work on the opposing uh, Vipers as well, so... There's this crazy mind game, uh, mind game going on constantly with those Vipers as to what you want to use them for. Good catch here though by Sero, recognized that part of that army was leaving and he does manage to catch that and uh, probably kill most of it as well for relatively nothing. Once again though, trying to get the positional advantage. Sero does manage to actually burrow right now in a really good position, manages to get two of those lurkers abducted too. Nicely done. Keep in mind though, Vipers can be abducted too by other Vipers. <laughs> <laughs> the yanking game is so dumb. Look at this. Oh my god. So all of those units that are being abducted, right? The priority is essentially what unit costs the most gas. Gas is the one limiting resource. Like I mentioned earlier, once those attack upgrades really come into play, uh, you know, links and banes and whatnot just really aren't that helpful anymore. So it mostly comes down right now to gas-heavy unit. The more gas you can mine, the stronger your army can become in the late game as well. Because Hydra Lurker Viper, once again, is what players are aiming for. All right, so Serral is finishing up plus three. Not entirely sure how the dynamic works between like plus three missile uh, lurkers versus plus two. I don't know if it's a significant difference. Nice little bit of micro once again there. By the finish, Zerk. Manages to get a couple of those, uh, you know, Biles to not connect with anything. Was forced to cancel, obviously. All right, so this is huge. Raynor actually just snuck a small hit squad out. And this right now allows him to also push through the center as Serral is forced to respond and it looks like the base will fall regardless. He's getting those lurkers away from it, but I think the hatchery indeed will be picked off. In the meantime though, a couple of uh, changelings were left behind. So at the very least, Serral knew that his opponent wasn't just gonna jump straight through the center of the map. Serral though does need to be careful. Vipers once again can be abducted here as well. Nicely done. Vipers get abducted on both sides. One Ravager also goes down. Lurker will also be picked off as it was left all the way by himself. Abductors? Or, uh, like, vipers abducting, ab like, vipers? So, so uh, what I'm trying to say is when two vipers abduct each other, how did I not headbutt in the center, okay? This is one of the things science can't explain. When a viper abducts a viper, and then in the meantime, that viper was also abducting that viper, how did I not meet in the center? How did I switch position? Shouldn't they headbutt and hit each other in the center? 
I need someone with a I need someone with like a science major to explain this to me, okay? So we're constantly trying to do small hit squads of units. Not quite being able to get something done this time around. And you know what? Raynor has been extremely resilient here. He's been a lot more roach heavy. Doesn't have that like scary of an army in a straight up fight, but he's not taking any straight up fights, right? Like he's constantly getting small trades here and there. Now really trying to utilize that multitasking. Now I've got a feeling that this army over here though won't be able to get that much done. But the thing is, if you have this many vipers, right? There's not a whole lot you can do anyway with lurkers. So he's trying to, I guess, position those lurkers right now uh, where the opponent's vipers are not located. I think in these kind of scenarios, it's much nicer to be the offend uh, like the offensive player. Because being defensive here really sucks. <laughs> it's so difficult. So although so far, showing us that it is doable, but he also ended up losing a base. Speaking of bases though, Raynor did just manage to get the base right here on the right hand side. Pretty important because all of his other expansions are starting to run very, very low. He's still trying to get the positional advantage here. Neither player really committing to too much. Those changelings actually very helpful as well. Constantly scouting out where the opponent's army is located. Reinforcements are just simply sent straight through the center of the map. Seems a little bit risky. Yeah, because finally Sero also has a, a bit of a squad right now on the northern section of the map to move in. But maybe this is the moment that Raynor was waiting for. He's going to indeed move forward right now. Vipers once again abducting other Vipers as well. Blinding Clouds going down as well to try and prevent the army from getting into the optimal position. This is such a crazy battle and this is what I'm talking about. This doesn't happen in your regular letter game of ZVZ. What is this? What is even going on here? Both players trying to get so much value out of their units that it's even difficult to call who won that fight. Considering Serral didn't even have most of his army there, I guess it was indeed, uh, you know, Raynor that, that came out ahead there. But, I mean, Serral held on with a smaller force. If that was at the same time a counterattack there by, uh, by Serral, I think that would have been really, really nice for him. Because there was very little at home to defend. But here we go. Once again, Lurkers do indeed get abducted. Only one right now remains underground. And I think indeed this is going to force Raynor to go back home. I would have loved to see a small army right now moving towards the northern section. I really feel like Serral's playing maybe a little bit too defensive here. But obviously, we have perfect vision. We know exactly where the opponent is located and what is going on. Nice bit of target firing there as well, actually. Gets the lurker that was on the back foot. Saron so actually taking this base over here. Very interesting. I would have expected him to defend, uh, you know, vertically from the third base downwards. Apparently, he decides to go for the expansion right here. That's a little bit closer to his fifth. This is also coincidentally very close to where his opponent has expended, which is now scouted, by the way, as well by Serro. Serro actually regrouping the majority of his units right here in the center of the map, too. Needs to be careful, though, because obviously if he leaves this unprotected, this base is going to be as good as dead. Viper still consuming some of that energy here as well, trying to get as much energy as they possibly can. A few roaches now actually made their way towards the mineral line. Serro notices, though, you can't really trade those roaches for all too much at this point. You can see the bank, by the way, of the Finnish Zerg really starting to grow. It's actually getting into a pretty good position as well. One of those spore crawlers get killed. Once again, a couple of those units get abducted. Blinding Cloud, though, prevents a lot of the units from Serro from firing. Good abducts there as well <laughs> from both players. And this is actually a scary position to be in. At the same time, Raynor actually commits a very large chunk of his force straight to the center of the map and then kills the hatchery, gets him out of there. He's essentially achieving right here what Serral is doing in a much slower fashion. Oh, Raynor actually decides to move forward. I don't really know exactly if that was necessarily the good choice, but he does indeed now bait a lot of those roaches and hydralisk into the, uh, into the splash damage there of those lurkers. At the same time, base right here, the natural expansion of Serral is being picked off. I mean... Serral's just simply gonna go ahead and transfuse a bunch of this, but Roaches do indeed have their Burrow ability. So they're gonna be able to sit underground and at the very least, you know, force this army once again to uh, require a lot more attention. There you go. Overseer is indeed gonna join in. Serral recognizes what is going on. And uh, while a couple of the Roaches are gonna try and run for their lives, I think the real battle is gonna happen right over here. Yeah, that nice little skirmish was great and all. A couple of bases were killed, but... Not that big of a deal, because those expansions were mostly mined out. Ooh, these drones have to be so careful. Raynor actually gets into a really good spot, but once again, one of those uh, lurkers is overextending. 10 range, though, absolutely massive, right? You can see that uh, the range right there is just simply much longer as it once was. You can't really fly too much forward either, because then your own vipers get abducted. 
Saro needs to be careful. Lost the base there. And actually spent most of his bank as well. Still ahead though when it comes to the supply count. He has a much bigger army, but... I mean, just like Siege Tanks TVT, you can't just shove forward and go in there. Ooh, now that was a good abduct. Ooh, nicely done. Really nicely done. Gets a free Viper. Vipers are the most expensive unit at this point in the game. They're just simply going to try and consume some of that energy of whatever structure is left over. These Viper battles are nuts, though. It's such a difficult balancing act as well. It's so tempting at this point in the game to just make like a million roaches and go from there. <laughs> oh, once again, Sero actually sitting into a, a really, uh, getting into a really good position there. Gets a couple of units there for pretty much free. At the same time, there are now roaches moving on the northern section of the map. I think these are trying to defend against the ones from Sero, who once again moves back through the center of the map. And he did, by the way, expand as well southward. So this is going to be his next line of defense. Is this currently scouted by Raynor? Well, I say it. An Overseer is already heading in that direction. Look at the actions permitted, by the way. It's actually pretty nuts, right? Like, so most of these players right now, at this point in the game, are pressing more than 10 buttons a second. Consistently. 10 buttons a second consistently, uh, consistently is nuts. So they're actually now caught in the middle of the map here with a couple of lurkers. Very expensive mistake. Not that much money anymore. Ooh, Raynor smelling blood in the water. He does get a good engagement here, but there are just simply so many Zerk units here available for the player in blue. Serono actually coming from every single side. Lurkers have blinding clouds all on top of them as well. At the same time, though, while this is going on, that hit squad from Raynor, once again, a move north, and it does manage to kill a base. Serono's gonna run in that direction as well. I think that Raynor needs to get out of there. You can't fight that. Get out! Okay, he's actually gonna try and pick off some of those units here. As the rocks are not down, this reinforcement is a little bit awkward. Eventually. Even though the base was killed, Serral's army just simply grew out of proportion. Raynor did not see the bases in the bottom left-hand corner. And eventually, Serral just simply mined a little bit more. Raynor was playing catch-up there for like the last 15 or so minutes. I think against pretty much everyone, he would have been able to get exactly what he was looking for to crawl his way back into the game. But Serral approached it slowly and steadily. And he eventually overwhelmed his opponent as the bases that Raynor had just simply ran out. And all of the expansions that he was trying to take as well or were picked off. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. Special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for all of your generosity. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile all right. And I will see you once again in the next one.